is on HTTPS at the moment. This is you know, the very attractive mobile responsive site because the resolution is so low <laughs> on this projector. That's actually the, um, that's mobile, that's not even an iPad with. So we'll try and, uh, try and do everything through this uh, in the little tiny window. But rather than talking about GitHub, we might just start by visiting realestate.com.au which is not a site I've ever coded on, um, but I thought I'd show it to you because it's kind of a bit like the way the GitHub site used to be. So you might notice that we're on HTTP up here, so it looks cute, <coughs> www. Let's see if I can find the login I sign in here. So I'm just going to show you what happens when we try and sign in. So we're on HTTPS now. So that's kind of interesting. And I'm going to enter my email and password. If you do see it in the inspector, don't worry, I don't actually use realestate.com.au. We're going to be looking <laughs> at the inspector soon. So just clear it to a tiny screen. Okay, so we're logging in. We're on HTTPS, right? No one's going to see our passwords. Well, well where have you posted it to? Well, I think that's not a problem, but watch, watch closely. speed of the internet. So here we are. Um, it tells me, oh look, James at crispdesign.net. So I have managed to log in, but it's kind of interesting that we're back here on HTTP again. So, quick quiz. Who thinks that is secure enough? Hands up, anyone? You can't tell without seeing where it was posted to. I think, I think there's more to it than that. But I've kind of given the game away a bit. Um, <laughs> so we're meant to say no at this point, right? <laughs> yeah. So you can you can say it's not secure. Anyone? Any takers? At least your password is secure. Yeah. So the password yeah, he, was sent to Billy. He would have so, ten times that. What do What do you think, guys? Any Anyone want to comment? Look, I've got a prize. Password was definitely Let's see. secure. A slice of pizza. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can find. Is it a key? Aha! Uh -huh. It is. Yeah, I am. I am. So, plural site hardcore developer training. Some people gave these to me. A monthly subscription worth twenty nine dollars. So I need, I need some a volunteer who's going to accept this prize and give me their opinion. Who wants to go? Twenty nine dollars. Twenty nine dollars. You got to get some. You want to do it? Who? Come on, someone wants a subscription, right? <laughs> I'll volunteer and I'll pick it. Well, I, my, I, I actually could know nothing about this area, but my spidey sense says it's not safe. Okay, there you go, $29 <laughs> yes. worth. Thank you, Niall. Good spidey sense. to see how many of these I've got. Is that what the question? Okay, whether, whether we're happy with the security so far. So, here we are. I'm James at ChrisDesign.net over here. So I'm in Chrome, you might notice. It's a bit hard to see in such low res, but it's definitely Chrome over here. So now I'm going to swap over to Firefox. And this is where our nasty hacker is using Firefox um, because it's another browser. That's, that's the main reason. But you might notice over here that our nasty hacker is not logged in as anyone at all. Um, however, this nasty hacker might be on the same Ethernet or wireless network, or he might be the NSA. Or he might be someone yeah. who's reading all your bytes. public TW. So go yeah, to public TW, um, something so this like is that. just about your session cookie coming back, right? Yeah, yeah, getting there, getting there. Mm. So the session cookie is available over here. I've conveniently opened the network window. Except it's such a small screen, man. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Okay, so you can see what's been going on here. There's a lot of requests. No comment on realestate.com.au making so many requests, of course. And here we are, here's our cookies. So, have a look down here. They've got a lot of cookies as well. And here's the session ID. So, this one, if you may have done some Java, I haven't done it for a long time, but I think that's a pretty old school um, way of recording the session with a, with a numeric or a hex sort of ID over there. So, that's come back. It's over HTTP, so anyone could be sniffing it out. And we can copy that, of course. Just check I'm actually logged in over here. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then just go across Firefox. Um, let's go to the cookie manager. And add a cookie. 
So it's it's this easy, right? To to do. You've it. got the cookie there already. Ah, uh, it's the wrong cookie. That's the non logged in person's okay. cookie. In that, this cookie manager isn't great. Um, so it occasionally fails me, but let's hope it's working this time. And we can find the button to close it down here. Okay. So if luck is with me and the cookie manager is working, when we reload this. Uh, Reload this page. Reload Last time I tried this, interestingly, it gave me a um, a key on the URL, which we haven't got this time. So I don't know if I've somehow had a mobile site rather than the normal site. So I'm a little bit worried. But assuming it works the same as when I tried it last time on the desktop, we hit this. It should give me the uh, yeah. welcome. Let's see. Ah, move across. Such a small window here to actually move across and a slow connection, so you have to bear with me. Uh, come on. Control move. minus, zoom out. Yeah, try that. Let's see. So oh gosh, go to the zoom. <laughs> I know. So I haven't, I haven't got it something. to work this time, unfortunately. Between that, ah, uh, see, I don't know why it keeps reloading here. So. You can take my word that should this have been a better experience inside of this tiny browser that we would have seen it say James at crispdesign.net. We can try it one more time and get this to load and get into the window so we can actually see it. It's pretty hard to see. Yeah, it's not signed in. Yeah, it's not signed in, so let's try it. Signed in here, yeah. So last time I did this, I got a URL parameter up here that I also copied across. So something has changed in this um, narrow format. So I'll try again later. But for the moment, you just have to take my word. Do you want I'll to try on one more link? time. Sorry. Do you want to click on buy link itself and see? Yeah, it, it was after I came back from the login. So let's and try quickly logging out and logging in again. So it seemed to have two parts to it. That we just seem to have got to different parts of the site in the two browsers. And the connection is not too snappy. Sign out, please. Is this a similar approach to what I've seen people doing in net cafes with people's Facebook plugins, where yeah. someone wrote a plugin for Fire Fire Sheep. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, your session. Is, is completely available yep. to anyone who's watching. I think quite a this is that I'm not actually getting into And the cookie's not secured itself. So the cookie, yeah, the cookie itself is plain text. But the credentials went up over SSL. So at least yeah. your password is So yeah, your yeah, password is safe. Passwords they kept your session, they can go change your password. But anyone... Yeah, but then involved. they'll ask you password so when you change it, right? So so they change well, it or <laughs> sometimes. But yeah. They might, but... Um, not all. Yeah, no. It depends what you can do without having to re-enter it. Or you it. You obviously don't have to re-enter it. Or if you're like everyone's mum, your password's the same for everything, right? Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> so we got the URL this it's time. Let me in. Get up. Oh, Let's try and try this in a... Who uses a free Wi-Fi over their phone? It's automatically done on oh, most phones. Yeah. I never know. That's daddy. I don't log into anything. Oh, I just use the browser. Well, everything I use is set to SSL all the time. Those ones, yeah. Yeah. All right, so, scrap. Yeah, I saw scrub. One more request and see whether we can manage it this time. Okie dokie, so. Grab the session ID, here we go. And take it across to Firefox, which is still zoomed out crazily. And you can just edit it. Yeah, the edit doesn't seem to work so well in this cookie manager. Um, it would seem like you'd be able to edit it, but it didn't seem to work reliably. So the onto the liters? This this or Hopefully overwrite it, close. Okay, let's see if we can do it. So I've got that token on the URL this time, which is maybe hopeful. 
sit down on it. Okay, so we get yeah. the point. <laughs> okay, so you get the point. So moving on, the problem is that as long as you're not re-prompting the password, right, anyone can pretend to be you with your session. And on the GetUp site, which I brought up before, we're just starting a, a new feature where you can donate without having to enter your credit card every time. So kind of the ante was increased a bit on your session. Before you used to be able to update your personal information Right. It wasn't that terrible if someone stole your session because you couldn't really get it any money. So we had a mixed mode site. So for donation stuff it was HTTPS, but for general petition signing and the majority of sort of the content on the site, then that was over HTTP. So it seemed like time to do a little bit of an upgrade and also you've got personal information flowing through um, and you don't want people to look at that. And generally it seemed like a good idea to prove that you're the right site as well to avoid any sort of spoofing and it simplified the code you know, not the most important thing but rather than this sort of mix mode and redirects happening um, we thought we'd switch it all over completely to, to HTTPS so we looked around to see what the cool kids were doing <laughs> and uh, we had a look at Google which you might have noticed these days actually redirects you to HTTPS as long as you're logged into something. Yeah, even for your search queries. So for the same problem, so you can't, presumably, um, this was one of their main reasons for it, um, for a search even you go to HTTPS. So there is a slight overhead in that, but the security increase is deemed, deemed worthwhile. If you're not logged in with Google, interestingly, it, um, it doesn't take you to HTTPS. It's as soon as you log in, then you're completely switched over. Um, but Twitter, for example, um, never lets you see the light of HTTP again. It's straight HTTPS. So we thought we'd take a leaf from Twitter's book and, and go with that simpler solution. So it's kind of a bit, well, well, let's see. There's a few things you need to do to go HTTPS. Now, it's kind of a different talk to talk about, you know, certificates and all that sort of thing. That's not really what I'm planning to do today. but. You need to obviously get yourself a certificate signed by one of the main certifying authorities. Um, if you are looking around, it's good to get a wildcard certificate. Um, if you are like, if you're just building an app for a client, and you know it's one thing, it's going to do the one thing. You don't need it. But if you've got a domain that you're going to keep hanging things off, you can pay like around a thousand dollars and get a wildcard one, and that means you can have any subdomains that you want off it, and that's that's pretty handy. Um, lots of things to do with subdomains. So that's, that's one thing, and also it really depends on your architecture where you want to put your certificate. In our particular case, we're on EC2, so we've got an elastic load balancer in front, and in the load balancer, that's where we've got the certificate sitting. So the actual processing load for anything like that is sitting in the Amazon infrastructure rather than on our app servers. So it's, it's kind of handy. So I don't want to go too far into that Side. You obviously also need to be listening on port 443 and um, actually have, have a website, etc. <laughs> but we're saying from the perspective here that you've got a site that supports it, but you're moving across to fully HTTPS is, is the main focus. So inside of Rails, it's kind of easy these days. There's a little bool that you can turn on called force SSL. And when you say force SSL true, you immediately get forced into SSL, and you get really forced into SSL. So this is this is where um, we learned about uh, HSTS. Which who knows about HSTS? This there's there's twenty nine dollars floating on it. Okay, what's HSTS? Not for you, for your your friend. He hasn't answered it yet. It's the strict transport support for HTTP, basically um, either through a HTTP header, and I think also through some DNS support to basically say that this site must always be over SSL mm -hmm. and the browser will only ever access it through SSL and I think in some cases will automatically transform non SSL links to the SSL link before requesting resources. Yeah that's right. So if you go to the Twitter site in um, Chrome and you so is that something stored mm -hmm. in the cert is it? So it's not on the cert, it's so it's kind of interesting. It's this um, this setup uh, yeah, here's the OWASP site talking about it. The so, header thing, isn't it? So it's hiding inside your Chrome, and you may not have realised that it was there.
But if you try and go to a site that has ever sent a HSTS header, you'll never be able to go to that site on HTTP again until that times out. And Twitter sets the time out to 20 years. So you'll be waiting a long time before you'll be seeing Twitter on HTTP. So if you're in Firefox or Chrome and you ever hit, hit it, that's it. You're on HTTPS forever. It's browser, so. so it's in this. So in Chrome, it's in this. You can get to it with this net internal stuff, and you can look up what's there. So for example, if we look up Twitter.com, you see. Oops! If you can scroll, see here um, that it's got some stuff stored there. So that means that when we go to Twitter.com. You actually, when you go to HTTP, it never actually makes the first request on HTTP. So this is, let's, let's bring up the inspector as well. So network. So we can see, okay, so twitter.com. Turn on the recording down the bottom. Um, should be. The should circle. Be, should, be, should be okay, I think. Um, so at the moment, right, we're going to HTTP twitter.com. And here's all Twitter stuff. Well, you, didn't, you didn't specify, so your browser, how, how do we know? Yeah, that yeah, so watch, watch on the request. So see this very interesting one. This is not a real request. This is a line. This is the web browser taking you to HTTPS before it's even made any request at all. And that's from the HSTS stuff. See, it looks a bit funky, right? It doesn't even have a response because it's not a real request. This is... This is Chrome um, just showing you. So I went to H look, so we went to HTTP here. Go yeah. see? Yep. Like, yeah. So we're at HTTP here. And now, oh look, we're at HTTPS. And we never made a request. We never for the got server. a status code back from it. Yeah, we never got a redirect or anything. So that's because of the HSTS stuff. They could have and put something in there, couldn't they? They could have given you a tip. Yeah, that it yeah. yeah, but you can see it because it's not a real request. So that was, that was kind of interesting. Now, there's a list of sites that are in HSTS already, um, like Twitter, Google, PayPal. So there's a few that, that come in by default, but any site can send this strict, um, strict header. So as an example, yeah, strict transport security with a max H, and after that, that's it for the site. So um, yeah, it's, it's a very powerful header. If you send this, that's it. So when we were looking at testing rollback for this, we kind of had these weird redirect loops and that's where we, we started looking at it because we turned on this false SSL and we thought it'd just do a redirect um, to HTTPS, but instead it sent this, this extra header with a huge max age and that's, that's basically show over for that site in, in Chrome if you ever want to roll back. You, you simply can't unless your users all clear their cache. So that's the HSTS stuff. We're going to have a look what um, our friends at Twitter are doing here. So, so what's the reasoning yeah. behind that? Is to stop the extra mm -hmm. request? Or? Well, it's to stop people from phishing, like faking a site, basically. So once, once you've sent this header, it means you're always going to be on HS, I mean HTTPS, which means you're always going to have yeah, the certificate yeah. um, check. So you always see, you know, it's Twitter, Inc., etc., rather than Twitter because you've mistyped it with like one T yeah. or something and it's then typed in your password. Mainly yeah. email attacks as well. If you're used mm -hmm. to start HTTP and rely on the redirect, yeah. Yeah. and then a man in the media decides mm -hmm. to rely on the personal redirect or something yeah, else, right. yeah. HSTS by missing that mm -hmm. first redirect. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll save you the one redirect, which is kind of a bonus as well. How different is it to a uh, permanent redirect, so, uh, other than the max age? Yeah, coming to so the permanent redirect is is actually so turning on this force SSL in in Rails, um, which really does force it, also does a permanent redirect, which is a 301. So that's also cached forever in your web browser. Um, so if you ever want to roll back from something, don't don't. Uh, don't give it a 301, give it like a 307 or a 302, which is a temporary redirect, which won't, which means that you have to check back with the original site to get the redirect again. Because if you send the 301 again, that's it forever. I think 301 will also update the bookmarks and will also tell the Google to update its indexes as well. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it does a full form. Mm -hmm. So from the rollback perspective, not so good. <laughs> The, the other thing that we'll have a, have a quick look at 
is what you want to do with your cookie as well. So once you're moving to HTTPS, um, then you don't want your cookie ever to be sent on HTTP because it'd be kind of embarrassing if you went to all this work and then you sent the cookie in plain text with your 302 redirect or something. That would be, that would be a bit sad. Um, because you'd be giving it away in plain text, right? So as long as you as long as you say on your cookie, so let's ha let's have a look what Twitter's doing. So here's here's Twitter setting a cookie, right? So it's this stuff here. You'll see at the end it says HTTP only, which is generally a good idea. It means that the JavaScript on the page can't access it, so it's only for the the server side. Generally a good idea, but the the most interesting thing is this secure flag. So once you say secure flag when you're setting the cookie, it means that your, the brow your client's browser will never send it over HTTP again. So the force SSL did all these things and we weren't quite expecting it to be so effective, to tell you the truth, because we were planning to do this rollback. Question? Yeah, just, just to clarify, HTTP only means that JavaScript can't access it. Mm -hmm. Does that mean JavaScript can't access it through the DOM or JavaScript callbacks won't send it. Um, I think it's through the DOM, but I haven't haven't really looked into it. So certainly, when a JavaScript, when JavaScript makes a request back to the server to uh, get like a, yeah. a small update back, obviously JavaScript can't access the cookie, but will it mm -hmm. still send the cookie on, on that request? Will the browser then insert it on the mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, but I don't know, I'm not sure. I've have to check. everything, right? Pretty much everything. Yeah. yeah. You usually you'd usually want to, well actually it has to has to work because we do a various Ajax calls. So yeah, it it has to work with that. Um, okay, so these these are kind of um, the the pieces of your move to HTTPS. So if you want to do it completely, you do a three oh one redirect. You do the HTTP only cookie with the secure, and you do the the HSTS stuff. So in .NET code, so something I prepared earlier, which is even in Vim is hard pressed to show on the screen. Let's make it a little bit smaller. So looks better when you've actually got some screen real estate. So this is this is pretty much. In, in Rails, it's like one ball you turn on in your, your kind of config. In .NET, it looks like it's a little bit more, but it's not that painful. So um, this is code that I haven't run. It's kind of put together from Stack Overflow um, because I'm on a Mac here. But you'll see that you've got a begin request, and then if it's HTTPS, we're setting the strict transport security. So that's the HSTS header, 20 years, like Twitter, and um, then we're doing doing the redirect with the 301, so permanent move, and you also need to do the um, the SSL only on your on your cookie stuff through the through the web config. So it's not it's not too bad, but there's a few few little pieces to put together. Um, if you just you know redirect people to HTTPS, you haven't like with a temporary redirect, you haven't really done the full job, and you haven't got the full benefits out of it. So, have a look at um, the Twitter request again. Um, you'll see that it's got the HTTP only stuff. We can't see the redirect because we're automatically going to the HTTPS. But it's got all the rest happening there. Um, where's the HSTS? Here we go, strict transport security, max age. And that's in seconds, so that's, that's the 20 year value here. So Twitter's, Twitter seems to be doing it all, all by the book, which is, which is kind of cool. Well, so if you want to roll back, the differences are your status code and don't do the HSTS till you're, you're really ready for it. So in terms, of, in terms of performance, it's not too bad. As you can see, major sites do it. It's mainly the first request, so you've got a few more round trips that you've got to do to set up the, the SSL. And once that's gone, you um, make sure you've got Keep Alive on your connections. So that means you keep reusing that setup cost. So if you're going to the states for your, your initial connection, like it's significantly slower on the first request because you've got like 300 milliseconds round trip time. So you've got, um, you've got quite a few more 100 milliseconds added on by like two or three extra round trips. But um, for the, if you're in Australia, like the GetUp site is in a, hosted in Australia, Australian EC2, 
Um, so for our members, it's not too bad. The round trip's pretty short. And it is only the first request. After that, you're, you're good. You're back to normal speed. In terms of performance on your app servers, um, if you were actually doing it yourself on your app servers, you'd have a bit more load, but not majorly. But it wasn't a problem at all for us because we kind of pushed that to the load balancer. In terms of some, like, I kind of had this vague feeling there'd be caching problems with HTTPS because I think in the old days there used to be. However, it's not the case. If you specify um, the appropriate headers, just the usual HTTP headers for eTag um, and all the, the usual sort of cache headers, they work fine. So it's no trouble to cache your assets indefinitely um, for, your, for your website for images and stuff as, as you usually do for HTTP. Like the Rails stuff you usually have the assets' names changing each time you do a deploy with an extension, so you cache them forever. Yeah. Isn't that per Questions? session though? Because the, the, the SSL session is per user, right? So, yes, so the caching session. is actually yeah. only happening per each user, right? It depends what you use for the cache headers. So you can, you can for your cache headers, you can say just for the session or you can say public. So private is just for the session and public means that it gets shared across the board. So for the, for the GetUp site, we use the public stuff because the assets, you know, who cares if you've got a copy of the images on your hard disk, etc. That's not, not a problem. But this means it's either not HTTPS or it is encrypted, so it can't be cached for, for other users if, if it's coming through HTTPS, right? So the, the things that we're saying to cache, like you can control what gets cached, right? So if the images come securely and then they get written to disk um, and someone else could read them, it's not a problem. So it's, it's still within the developer's control with the cache headers to say which bits get cached and which bits don't get cached. Yeah. I think historically browsers wouldn't mm. persist HTTPS resources to disk. Yeah, so um, that's obviously changed. By, by default, I think Firefox, you need to specify the cache headers, but generally the other browsers um, just stored them. So I did come across this guy um, here who seemed to know quite a lot about IE internals. And um, yeah, he says here that um, on IE internals blog that by default all versions of Internet Explorer will cache HTTPS content so long as the caching headers allow it. So even even like old IEs, which I thought would be our biggest problem, um, turned out to, to be fine in that regard. So you don't really have to worry about the caching side. There's not, not much downside of the of moving to HTTPS, really. There are a few gotchas, though. So when we when we deployed the site, so we do some redirects. So the main site is getup.org.au. But if you go to getup.org, um, then we used to redirect you straight to getup.org.au um, so that you, you went to the canonical URL with the, with the www. And when we first did that, we had you know, the certificate error warning because this um, piece of middleware that we had turned on with force SSL came in at the very start, which you know, seems sensible usually, but it means that on the other non-canonical domains, you actually went to HTTPS on that domain before you came to the canonical domain. Mm -hmm. And we had the certificate for getup.org.au, not getup.org. So you got the certificate warning, so I fixed that up actually today. Um, so you can see that because it's actually separate pieces of middleware, so there's kind of, in Rails, there's this, it's actually below Rails, but anyway, you can put stuff in um, around your application that lets you deal with the requests at a very basic level, so not like inside your app, like outside your app, like kind of metal level. So anyway, that's, that's the bit that does the HTTPS and the bit that does the canonical redirects for us. So it's in, in two redirects, so we're doing a 301 from getup.org, so that's a permanent redirect to, um, to the getup.org.au. And then, so then we're going to HTTPS. So that's why we don't get the warning and the, you know, the, you're going to a phishing site message because we're doing it in the right order. You could actually skip one of those redirects um, if we, we actually had it architected slightly differently and go straight to the, to the HTTPS version. But you know, just from the pieces that we're using, we have one extra redirect. So that, that seems grand, and we've fixed that. Um, but if you're hosting like a, another website, um, for example, content.communityrun.org, 
this is one that I haven't fixed yet, and this is what it we haven't fixed yet. This is this is what it looks like. So this is this is one of the downsides of moving to HTTPS because it's designed to stop people pretending to be other people's sites. It does actually do that. And if you're providing something um, for for another website, for example, so um, at GitHub we have uh, um, another system, like a, a related site that's for you for people to start their own petitions and that sort of thing. And we've kind of it's a different product, and we've kind of extended by some theme stuff on our site, and we're just hosting it on a subdomain on there, um, so that it looked like it was part of that product, but it wasn't really part of that product. It was like a DNS um, to make it look like it, and theming as part of our site. But that breaks down because now on HTTPS you can't pretend to be on the other site when you're not really there. So you get the you get the warning when you when you go through. Just a note on that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously there's something wrong with Stim, you'll probably name this batch and it says proceed anyway. Mm -hmm. The HSTS spec mm -hmm. says that browsers must stop offering mm -hmm. proceed anyway and basically go on our own business. Mm -hmm. huh. It's good to know. Yeah. Um, very good. On that HSTS stuff. Yeah. You said IE just didn't support it. Um, yeah, so the HSTS stuff, I think it's... I was just checking IE11 to see what it was doing. Yeah, I don't think it's... Uh, I I11, think. I'm not sure. I10 doesn't support The it. network tracing 11 was still showing that 301 redirect. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it was just mm -hmm. doing that in the, in the yeah. dev tools or if it was actually mm -hmm. getting the redirect. So yeah, I'd have to be. do Wireshark on here, but um, it's... Nah, that so it's yeah. uh, No. So I was already on. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a problem there. Just yeah, the first time obviously. Yeah. Yeah, unless you're in the unless you're in the HSTS sort of beginning list that you get given. So Twitter Twitter is in there already. So if they're supporting it you should never get the three oh one. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not sure if the dev tools are showing that. Yeah. I couldn't see anything in there about it. Maybe the I IE blog has something about it, but don't know. Mm. Unsure. Okay, so that that was the stuff that um, that I want to talk about. You haven't got any questions around it? I know some people drop scripts from third party analytics mm -hmm. providers and things like that into their site. Yeah. Did you have to deal with any of that? So we've got Google Analytics and we've got a few other bits. We've got Add This. We've got a few of them. And uh, because we already supported HTTPS on, on some of our pages and they're sort of part of the template. So we already had it set up to handle it. So it's usually using like just slash slash rather than HTTP or HTTPS for it. And then those third party providers support HTTPS as well. Yeah. We're using we're using like the Amazon um, CDN and we do the same thing with that for handling the HTTPS as well. Like it's no problem to have multiple things from different HTTPS sites. The problem is when you have some HTTP as well as the HTTPS. So yeah. the trick is not to hard code the HTTP. Yeah, generally leave it out and you're good. So with this new stuff, if you do have mixed mode like that, will yeah. we just what will happen if you don't? Uh, you occasionally see it like on Gmail and stuff. You just get like a sad looking security icon. Mm -hmm. um, it's like kind of in Chrome, the color goes out of it. Yeah, I've seen that occur. Mm -hmm. So the new settings for H, H, the HSTS, 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 HSTS were they say no? Sorry, no mixed no mode. Mix mode. The, the HSTS. Says that the browser is supposed to translate any HTTPS mm -hmm. Right, so providing so, you're available. So, assuming the resources are there on the yeah. site, they should come through. Okay. According to the spec. Mm. <laughs> Any other questions? That's cool. So, I'm going I'm to turn it yeah. on my rail site. Mm -hmm. So, I just put it in application RB. Yeah, for SSL. What, what else true. do I need to? Obviously, That's I need a development certificate. What else do I you need? Cross to your fingers about? and put on the well, fingers undies and everything. Else? If you don't, <laughs> I'm wearing, wearing okay, okay, yeah. you should be right. There. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have anything on four four three, you'll go. You'll get redirected there, and then you won't have anything listening. So you get like can't find the site. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you should at least see the redirect to the um, to the SSL side. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Oh, if there's any other questions. Um, Thanks, James.